Hi friends, today in our series on the demystifying NDS, we are going to talk about NDS 115 revenue from contract with customer. This is a very important standard and it has become mandatory from 1st of April 2018. So in respect of accounting periods commencing on or after 1st April 2018, the standard is mandatory and this replaces the current standard. There were two standards. One was in DS 11 on construction contracts and second was in DS 18 on revenue recognition. So both these standards stand superseded by this new standard in DS 115. And for the real estate, there was a separate guidance note. That guidance note will also get withdrawn uh, because of the mandatory applicability of this standard. So under this standard, revenue is a five-step model. So we typically call it a five-step model. The step one is identify the contract with the customer. In identifying the contract with the customer, it's important that an entity carefully analyzes whether there is a contract with the customer or not. If there is no contract, there will be no revenue. However, the contract need not always be in writing. Contract can be oral, contract can be express, or contract can be implied contract. The second step is identify the separate performance obligation in a contract. It is possible that a contract has multiple elements. Say for example, supply and installation. Now supply of goods and installation may be two separate performance obligations. If there are two separate performance obligations, an entity should identify those performance obligations. Third is determine the transaction price. Now, under India's 115, transaction price determination is not straightforward. It has many significant issues which needs to be carefully analyzed. Say for example, if there is a financing component which is involved in a transaction price. Say for example, the credit period allowed to an entity to a customer is two years and the goods are supplied to him for one lakh rupees. Then the entity would be required to compute the notional time value of money for two years. If say if we take an interest rate of 10% and for two years the interest comes out to be 20 rupees. Then in this case, out of the 100 rupees of revenue, 20 rupees will be the interest element or out of 1 lakh rupees of revenue, 20,000 will be the interest element and the revenue recognized on account of sale of goods will only be 80,000 and 20,000 will be recognized as an interest, in, interest income over a period of 2 years. So it's quite possible that earlier the entity was recognizing revenue of rupees 1 lakh upfront. Now it will recognize the revenue of 80,000 upfront and 10,000 will be recognized in year 1 over the period of time as an interest income and in year 2 again 10,000 will be recognized as an interest income over the entire year. Similarly, if a customer has given an advance, then again the notional interest cost is to be computed and the revenue needs to be adjusted. There is a practical expedient which has been given and that practical expedient is up to one year. That is if the advance component is for a period of up to one year or the credit period is up to one year, then a company may not find out the time value of money. Another important point relating to the transaction price is the variable consideration. There is a very peculiar uh, requirement of India 115 and that is to estimate the variable consideration. Consider an entity which is considering that its revenue, fixed revenue will be 1 crore rupees and there will be a variable consideration of up to 40 lakh rupees. It needs to see what are the scenarios, what is going to be the variable consideration, what are the li likely outcomes. If it goes on a most likely outcome approach and it says most likely we will get 20 lakh rupees as a variable consideration, then its revenue will be 1.2 crore rupees which will be recognized depending upon uh, the other revenue recognition criteria prescribed in the standard. However, if the entity estimates that there can be various scenarios or various probabilities associated with those scenarios, then it is required to compute an expected value. Consider this case, if the entity expects that there is a 10% probability that the variable consideration will be 0 and there is a 20% probability that the variable consideration will be 10 lakhs, there is a 30% probability that the variable consideration will be 15 lakhs and there is a 40% probability that the variable consideration will be 20 lakhs. In this case, it will be required to compute the expected value and how it will be computed? 
0.1, which is a 10% probability, will be multiplied by 0, which comes to 0. Then 0.2, which is a 20% probability, will be multiplied by 10 lakhs. So we get 2 lakhs. Then 0.3 will be multiplied by 15 lakhs. So we get 4.5 lakhs. And then 0.4, which is a 40% probability, will be multiplied by 20 lakhs. Thus, the variable consideration will be 0 plus 2 lakhs plus 4.5 lakhs plus 8 lakhs. That is 14.5 lakhs. And the revenue that the entity will be required to be recognized will be 1 crore plus 14.5 lakhs. So it will be 114.5 lakhs. Looks strange, but that's the requirement of the standard. And a company will also have to keep the separate calculation for the purpose of income tax and GST because income tax and GST may not accept this figure of revenue recognition and the company will also be required to give a disclosure in its financial statement giving a reconciliation between the contract revenue and the revenue which is recognized by the entity in its financial statements. Step 4 is the allocation of transaction price to the separate performance obligations and this is a very important step. Consider a company which gives loyalty points on the purchases. Say for example, a company gives one reward point for the purchase of 100 rupees of goods and there is a customer which buys 10,000 rupees of goods, he gets 100 reward points. Similarly, a company gets say 1,000 customer in a year. So there are 1 lakh reward points which have been given to the customer. Now the company will need to estimate how many reward points are expected to be redeemed by the customer. Suppose the company estimates that 90,000 points are expected to be redeemed by the customer. Now the company will have to estimate what is the cost of providing these goods and services on account of the loyalty point. Suppose each loyalty point is worth 90 pesa for the company. Then 90,000 points into 0.9 per point, 81,000 rupees is going to be the expected cost of uh, providing the goods and services in respect of the loyalty points which have been accrued by the customers. If the sale of the company is 20 lakh rupees, then out of 20 lakh rupees, 81, 000, and then the total consideration which the company has given is a 20 lakh rupees of goods and services plus 81 lakh, uh, 81,000 rupees of the loyalty points. It will aggregate its consideration uh, to 20 lakh 81,000 and will have to proportionately allocate the revenue between revenue from goods and services and revenue from the loyalty points. And revenue from the loyalty points will be recognized in its financial statement over a period of time when these loyalty points are redeemed by the customers. The fifth element is recognize revenue when the entity satisfies a performance obligation. So once the entity has identified the transaction price, and allocated the transaction price to various performance obligation, it will have to recognize revenue depending upon whether the control is transferred at a point in time or over a period of time. If the control is transferred over a, uh, over a period of time, then it will be able to recognize revenue on a proportionate completion basis. However, if the control is transferred at a point in time, then it will be able to recognize revenue when the control is transferred. Significant implication of implementation of this standard are expected to be on the life sciences companies, on the real estate. In fact, real estate in India could be the one which could be biggestly, uh, which could be the which could have highest impact because it is possible that it may not be able to recognize revenue on percentage completion basis if the criteria speci specified under India 115 is not met. And if that happens, it's quite possible that under ICDS, it may have to compute its normal tax on the percentage completion basis and has to pay the normal tax. Whereas in accounting, it will not be able to recognize revenue and it may recognize revenue in the later years. And then it may have to pay MAT on account of book profit. So it could be a double whammy for the real estate sector. Similarly, the retail sector is also likely to be impacted on account of computing the value of the loyalty points. So this India 115 will have a far reaching implication for many industries and the entities are advised to prepare for the standard well in advance. Thank you.